Hello, Helen. Sorry I'm late. Hi, Jeremy. No problem. Well, we'd better work out where we are on our project, I suppose. Yeah, I've looked at the drawings you've done for my story, the forest, and I think they're brilliant. They really create the atmosphere I had in mind when I was writing it.、Oh, I'm glad you like them. There are just a few suggestions I'd like to make. Go ahead. Now, I'm not sure about the drawing of the cave. It's got trees all around it, which is great, but the drawing's a bit too static, isn't it?、Mm. I think it needs some action. Yes, there's nothing happening. Perhaps I should add the boy, Malcolm, isn't it?、Mm. He would be walking up to it. Yes, let's have Malcolm in the drawing.、Mm. And what about putting in a tiger? The one that he makes friends with a bit later. Maybe it could be sitting under a tree, washing itself. And the tiger stops in the middle of what it's doing when it sees Malcolm walking past. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll have a go at that. Then there's the drawing of the crowd of men and women dancing. They're just outside the forest, and there's a lot going on. That's right. You wanted them to be watching a carnival procession, but、mm. I thought it would be too crowded. Do you think it works like this? Yes, I like what you've done. The only thing is, could you add Malcolm to it without changing what's already there?、Mm. What about having him sitting on the tree trunk on the right of the picture? Yes, that would be fine. And do you want him watching the other people? No, he's been left out of all the fun. So I'd like him to be crying.、Mm. That'll contrast nicely with the next picture where he's laughing at the clowns in the carnival. Right, I'll do that. And then the drawing of the people ice skating in the forest.、Mm, I wasn't too happy with that one because they're supposed to be skating on grass, aren't they? That's right, and it's frozen over. At the moment. It doesn't look quite right.、Mm, I see what you mean. I'll have another go at that.、Mm, and I like the wool hats they're wearing. Maybe you could give each of them a scarf as well. Yeah, that's easy enough. They can be streaming out behind the people to suggest they're skating really fast.、Mm, great. Well, that's all on the drawings. Right. So you finish writing your story, and I just need to finish illustrating it. And my story and your drawings are done. So the next thing is to decide what exactly we need to write about in the report that goes with the stories, and how we're going to divide the work. Right, Helen. What do you think about including a section on how we planned the project as a whole, Jeremy? That's probably quite important. Yeah. Well, you've had most of the good ideas so far. <laughs> how do you feel about drafting something? Then we can go through it together and discuss it. Okay, that seems reasonable. And I could include something on how we came up with the ideas for our two stories, couldn't I? Well, I've started writing something about that. So why don't you do the same, and we can include the two things? Right. So what about our interpretation of the stories? Do we need to write about what we think they show, like the value of helping other people, all that sort of thing? That's going to come up later, isn't it?、Mm. I think everyone in the class is going to read each other's stories and come up with their own interpretations, which we're going to discuss. Oh, I missed that. So it isn't going to be part of the report at all. No, but we need to write about the illustrations because they're an essential element of children's experience of reading the stories.、Mm. It's probably. Easiest for you to write that section, as you know more about drawing than I do. Maybe, but I find it quite hard to write about. I'd be happier if you did it. Okay. So when do you think we can get this ready? Hi, Joanna. Good to meet you. Now, before we discuss your new research project, I'd like to hear something about the psychology study you did last year for your master's degree. So,、uh, how did you choose your subjects for that? Well, I had six subjects, all professional musicians and all female. Three were violinists, and there was also a cello player and a pianist and a flute player. 
They were all very highly regarded in the music world, and they'd done quite extensive tours in different continents, and quite a few had won prizes and competitions as well.、Mm. And they were quite young, weren't they? Yes, between twenty-five and twenty-nine. Um, the mean was twenty-seven point eight. I wasn't specifically looking for artists who'd produced recordings, but this is something that's just taken for granted these days, and they all had. Right. Now you collected your data through telephone interviews, didn't you? Yes. I realised if I was going to interview leading musicians, it'd only be possible over the phone because they're so busy. I recorded them using a telephone recording adapter. I'd been worried about the quality, but it worked out all right. I managed at least a thirty-minute interview with each subject, sometimes longer. Did doing it on the phone make it more stressful? I'd thought it might. Um, it was all quite informal, though, and in fact, they seemed very keen to talk. And I don't think using the phone meant I got less rich data; rather, the opposite, in fact. Interesting. And you were looking at how performers dress for concert performances. That's right.、Uh, my research investigated the way players see their role as a musician, and how this is linked to the type of clothing they decide to wear. But that focus didn't emerge immediately. When I started, I was more interested in trying to investigate the impact of what was worn on those listening, and also whether someone like a violinist might adopt a different style of clothing from, say, someone playing the flute or the trumpet. Hmm. It's interesting that the choice of dress is up to the individual, isn't it? Yes. You'd expect there to be rules about it in orchestras, but that's quite rare. You only had women performers in your study.、Mm-hmm. Was that because male musicians are less worried about fashion? I think a lot of the men are very much influenced by fashion, but in social terms, the choices they have are more limited. They'd really upset audiences if they strayed away from quite narrow boundaries.、Mm. Now. Popular music has quite different expectations.、Uh, did you read Mike Frost's article about the dress of women performers in popular music? No. Well, he points out that a lot of female singers and musicians in popular music tend to dress down in performances and wear less feminine clothes,、um, like jeans instead of skirts.、Uh, and he suggests this is because otherwise they'd just be discounted as trivial. But you could argue they're just wearing what's practical. I mean, a pop music concert is usually a pretty energetic affair. Yes, he doesn't make that point, but I think you're probably right. I was interested by the effect of the audience at a musical performance when it came to the choice of dress. The subject I interviewed felt this was really important.、Mm. It's all to do with what we understand by performance as a public event. They believed the audience had certain expectations. And it was up to them as performers to fulfil these expectations, to show a kind of esteem. They weren't afraid of looking as if they'd made an effort to look good.、Mm. I think in the past the audience would have had those expectations of one another too, but that's not really the case now. Not in the UK, anyway. No. And I also got interested in what sports scientists are doing too with regard to clothing. Musicians are quite vulnerable physically, aren't they? Because the movements they carry out are very intensive and repetitive.、Mm. So, I'd imagine some features of sports clothing could safeguard the players from the potentially dangerous effects of this sort of thing. Yes, but musicians don't really consider it. They avoid clothing that obviously restricts their movements, but that's as far as they go. Anyway, coming back to your own research, do you have any idea where you're going from here? I was thinking of doing a study using an audience, including. Good evening, City Police Station. Can I help you? Oh, hello. I'd like to report a stolen briefcase, please. Just a minute, and I'll put you through. Lost property. Can I help you? Oh yes. 
I've had my briefcase stolen. Okay, I'll take some details. Tell me what it looks like, first of all. Well, it's a soft leather one, you know, not a heavy box type like a man's. Mm -hmm. And how does it close? It's got buckles at the front, two of them. They're gold-plated ones. Fine. Uh, was it locked? No, I'm afraid not. Never mind. Any distinguishing features? Pardon? Any marks or badges on it that make it stand out? Uh, only the brand name. And where's that? It's on the back, at the bottom in the left-hand corner. It's saggy. Oh, and there's a scratch. It's quite bad, but small, directly above the brand name. I did it recently, putting it on my bike. I've got that. So, what did you have inside the briefcase? Well, all my papers from college. It's so frustrating, but thank goodness for computers. I haven't lost them completely. Yes, you're lucky. I had my wallet in my pocket, so I didn't lose that. But there were also my pens, which I got for my birthday, and a novel I was planning to read on the train. Right. Where exactly did you lose the briefcase? Well, I couldn't believe it. I was standing on the platform. It was right next to me. You were holding it? I just put it down on the floor, but I could almost feel it beside me. I was watching for my train because sometimes it comes early, and then next time I looked, my briefcase wasn't there. And what time was this? Uh, it was... It must have been about 5.20. No, a bit later. I'd say 5.30, because it was just getting crowded, and the train normally comes at about 25 to 6. Right. If you'll just give me some personal details. Yes. What name is it? I'm Mary Prescott. Can you spell that? Yes, it's P-R-E-S-C-O... Double T. And your address? Flat 2, 41 Fountain Road, Canterbury. Fountain Road? Yes, number 41. And have you got a contact telephone number? Yes, it's 752239. 752239. Fine. Uh, one last question. What would you say the value of your briefcase is? Including the contents? Yes. Just a rough estimate is fine. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, the briefcase itself is quite new. I bought it last month for £40. I suppose about £65. The contents are worth about £20 or £25 at least. That's fine. Well, um, if you could come down to the station tomorrow, you can sign this form and have a look at what we've got here. OK, thanks. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Can I come in? Oh, yes, come in. How can I help you? I was looking for the economics office. I've been all over the arts faculty building looking for it, but I could only find the School of Accounting and Economic History. Is this the right place? Yes, this is the School of Economics. Oh, good. Um, I'm a new student, and I was wondering if someone could give me some information. Well, I might be able to help. I lecture on that program. What do you need to know? Oh, quite a few things, actually. Mm -hmm. Firstly, how many lectures a week do I have to attend? Ah, oh, well, the Economics 1 course is a double unit, so there are two lectures a week and one tutorial. Oh. The lectures are scheduled for Tuesday and Thursday. What time? Ah, oh, let me see. Um, you know, this information is all in the handout, which you should have received yesterday at the orientation meeting. Uh, oh, was there, was there a meeting yesterday? I didn't know about that. Um, no one... Yes, <laughs> there was. But, uh, never mind... Now, lectures are at four in the afternoon. Oh, uh, four's a bit late. I've got a part-time job that starts at 4.30. Well, you can't be in two places at once, can you? 
and attendance at lectures is necessary. We expect at least 90% attendance at this university, you know. 90%? That's high. Do they enforce that rule? Yes, we do. We're pretty strict about it, actually. And what times have been set down for the tutorials? Do you have that information? That's a very well-attended course, so there's a number of tutorial times. Um, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, all at nine o'clock. Yours will be allocated at the first lecture. Can't I choose the time? Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to talk to the lecturer on the course. Dr. Roberts is his name. Oh, okay. Anything else I can help you with while you're here? Well, yes, actually. Do you know what the course requirements are? I mean, uh, how much work is expected for this course? Well, you have to complete a tutorial paper. Well, what does that involve? Well, it's a piece of work on a given topic based on some set reading texts. You'll have to give a small talk to your tutorial group. Oh, how long does that have to be? Oh, about 25 minutes, usually. I have to talk for 25 minutes? Yes, that's right. <laughs> And then you have to write up your piece of work and give it to the lecturer to be marked. Right. Uh, and is that all? No. You also have to complete a 3,000-word essay on a topic. Can I choose the topic? Yes. Usually you can. Right. Huh. That shouldn't be too bad. And in addition to that, there is an exam. An exam? <laughs> what sort of exam? Well, it's an open book exam. Does that mean I can have the textbook with me during the exam? Yes, that's right. And can you give me any idea about the content of the first year of economics so that I can get into some reading? Well, you'll be getting the reading list next week when lectures start. All the books are in the library. Yes, but won't everyone else take them out as soon as they get the reading list too? Well, yes, they might. But most of the important ones are held in closed reserve. That's a part of the library where you can go to read books, but you can't take them out of the building. What did you call that section of the library? Closed reserve. However, we do recommend that you buy the core books. You'll find them useful, and you'll need them for the exam. Yes, I suppose I will. But what is the focus of the course? Well, the course at this university has a vocational focus. That is, a focus on preparing its graduates for work. So we're orientated very much towards employment. Oh, so my chances of getting a job are good. Well, provided you get good results. Well, look, thanks for your time. You've been really helpful. <laughs> That's fine. See you next week, then. Describe the oldest person you know. You should say who this person is, how you know this person, what kind of person he or she is, and explain what you think about this person. The oldest person that I know is my grandfather. He is actually very close to me. When I was young, my father was away a lot in the army, and my grandfather took on the role of my father. He is a very kind gentleman. He is a simple man in that he likes to socialise and drink with his friends at home. He is a carpenter by trade, and one time I was able to work with him when my father asked him to put a floor in our house. Once when I was going on a train trip, he gave me a whole carton of a special kind of candy that I liked. I really love my grandfather, and I believe that he loves me. He has taught me a lot about just being happy with the things that I have to do, and also to take time to enjoy life. I think that I get some of my athletic ability from him, as he knows Kung Fu. I haven't seen my grandfather for a few years, but I know that he is doing well, and I know that he will be happy to see me when I go to visit him. I believe that he grew up in a pretty rough time here in China, Things were a lot more difficult than they are now, but through it all he always maintained a happy outlook on life. I would like to grow up and be like him in some ways. I wouldn't say that he is perfect in any way, but then who is? Describe a child you know. You should say how you know him or her. 
what he or she likes to do, what kind of person he, she is, and explain how you feel about this child. I would like to tell you about my niece, Mau Mau, who is seven years old. I stay with her and her family every national holiday, and she is always so delighted to see me. I helped to take care of her after she was born, so I feel very close to her, and we have a good relationship. We like to ride bikes together through our small city, and often fly kites. Before going to sleep at night, she always asks me to tell her a story and sing her some songs. I love this child very much because she is always so happy. And I can't help but feel happy too when I'm with her. Although she goes to school now and has to study very hard, she still doesn't worry about life and is very optimistic. Some people think that children are happy only because they are naive. Spending time with Mau Mau has helped me to see that I can have a positive attitude towards my life and be happy, even though I am no longer a child. And have many responsibilities. Mau Mau trusts her parents to take care of her, so she doesn't have to worry. I should trust that things will work out right also. That way, I can be like her, cheerful and happy all the time. Describe a famous person, sports star, film star, etc., whom you admire. You should say who the person is. What the person does, why the person is famous, and explain why you admire this person. I admire Yao Ming. I know it sounds common, but I think he's a very interesting person, and I like him. Yao Ming is a professional basketball player. He's well over two meters tall, but unlike most tall players, he has a lot of skill. Not just a height advantage. He is currently playing for the Houston Rockets. Yao is famous for two reasons. The first is that he is only the third Chinese player to play in the NBA, and the second is that he's the tallest NBA player, and very good too. It's not just because he's Chinese that he is famous in China. He is also famous in the United States for his skill. His good sportsmanship and his warm personality. For him, basketball is a passion and a career. But despite all his fame, he doesn't have a big head and stays cool both on court and in front of the camera. I guess that's why I admire him, because he's famous, but not arrogant or proud. He plays well without playing mean, and he is still just a simple man. Even though his face is on posters and in advertisements everywhere, there are many stars who become famous and then fall in love with themselves. Fame is passing, so I really like Yao Ming's attitude. To him, it doesn't seem to matter whether he's famous or not, as long as he can keep doing what he loves: basketball. Describe an adventurous person you know. You should say. Who the person is, how you know this person, what this person does that is adventurous. Explain how you feel about the risks this person takes. I'd like to describe my cousin Liu Ying to you, who, in my opinion, is very adventurous. During the time she was studying at university, she was always active in sports. And often organized excursions with fellow students to go mountain biking, rock climbing, swimming in rivers, and so on. She even backpacked in Tibet for two weeks with only four hundred RMB in her pocket. After she graduated with a degree in medicine, she decided that instead of joining a large hospital, which would have guaranteed her a high salary. She joined a volunteer group to Yunnan to help treat sick villagers. She often has to travel to remote mountain villages and is always in danger of having an accident.
being caught in terrible weather, or catching the illness herself. I feel very proud of my cousin for taking these risks, because it shows that she is selfless and cares more about those around her. Many people are concerned about those who need help, but seldom sacrifice their own time, energy, and money to reach out to them. My cousin has sacrificed her own career to help others, and I believe her memory will live on in the hearts of those she helps. Daring to be different definitely makes my cousin adventurous. Describe a leader who you admire. For example. In sports, business, or politics, you should say who this person is, what this person did, has done that you admire, how you know this person or know about this person, and explain how this leader's qualities impressed you. One leader that I admire is Bill Gates. Well, what do I admire about Bill? He's really rich. No, just kidding. But that is one of the reasons that I admire him. I think that if you are going to make money and that is your goal, then he is the best role model. His is a success story that you don't see too often. Of course, I use his software and I know that it is not the greatest. But you know what? It is the first, and that says something to me. I also admire him for not staying in school just to stay in school. Once he saw what he wanted to do, he didn't wait around until graduation, but instead grabbed the opportunity while he could and took off with it. Another thing that I admire about him is that he is not content with what he has accomplished, but is still looking for ways to get his product to the world. Now I know that he has enemies and people that say this and that about him. But so has every other visionary that has stood out from the crowd. I hear now that he is giving a lot of his money to charitable organisations, and this just makes me want to say, "Bravo to him! He's a modern-day hero." Describe one of your neighbours. You should say, "How long you have known this neighbour? What sort of person they are? How often you see them?" And explain what kind of relationship you have with them. I would like to talk to you about a neighbour that lives next door to me. I just moved into a new apartment, so I didn't know anyone. But this neighbour is an older woman, and she was very friendly when I first met her. She saw me move in all my things, and I think she felt sorry for me. Or something, because she offered to buy me some vegetables at the market. She said that she gets them very cheap, and that I would have to pay a lot in the store. At first, I told her not to buy anything for me, as I didn't want to bother her. But she insisted and kept assuring me that she wanted to buy vegetables for me. So finally, I agreed. I was so surprised when she showed up at my door later. As I was arranging my new apartment, she had an armful of onions. She told me that they are very healthy, so I gave her some money for the onions. Then she went home, and I continued cleaning and unpacking. Later that day, or the next day, I don't remember, she knocked on my door again. She had made a special dish from her hometown, and she brought me a little bowlful. I thanked her. And she seemed very happy that she could do things for me. I think she is a very motherly type of person, and it makes me feel good that even though I live away from my family, I have a caring person like her as a neighbour. Describe an important building in your hometown. You should say what it is, what it looks like, what it is used for. And explain why it is important. Okay, I will tell you about a building in my hometown, Harbin. In a square in downtown Harbin, there is an old Russian Orthodox church. It's called the Sophia Church, probably named after a saint, Sophia. Anyway, 
It's in a nice square about 100 meters long and 50 meters wide. The church is about 30 or 40 meters high, not very big. It is made of red brick, and the architecture, as I said before, is in the old Russian style. If you've ever seen pictures of the famous church in Moscow, I cannot remember its name, you'll know what it looks like. Of course, it's smaller and less fancy. There is only one large domed roof, and there are maybe five or six bell towers. I think there are more pigeons inside than people. They charge a lot of money to see the inside. I never went inside, so I don't know what it looks like. I heard that the church was once going to be demolished, but it was built so strong the workers gave up and left it there. Now it is a very famous tourist attraction, and visitors from around China and the world go to see it and take pictures. I think it's important because it is a historical relic and a little peaceful place in the busiest part of the city. It's also part of the city's image. Harbin is an interesting mixture of both old and new. No matter how many skyscrapers and tall apartment buildings are built, it still has an old and friendly flavour, like a visit to your grandparents' home. I hope the church stays there. Describe a room you lived in when you were a child. You should say what it looked like. What was in it? What you did in the room? Explain what you liked about the room. My favourite room was the study room in my house. It had been a landing, but we made it into a study, and that is where I used to do my schoolwork or any kind of project. The room was not so big, about five square metres. It had a bookcase, a table with four chairs, a filing cabinet, an entertainment centre with a TV, a large window, and a door leading to our balcony. Because of the window and door, there was plenty of light and fresh air, which made it a very nice place to work. During the school year, that would be my study room. During vacation and after I finished high school, I would use it for reading and other projects. There was also a computer in the room, which I often used to go online and do research. Sometimes I would also chat with my friends on the computer. I liked this room because it was quiet and very sunny. There was a large mango tree outside the window. That was very nice to look at. I always felt very relaxed and calm when I used that room. I also liked to practice on my keyboard in that room. A hotel. Describe a hotel you stayed at or have seen. You should say what the name of the hotel was, where it was, what facilities it had, and explain your impressions of this hotel. There was a very nice hotel that I used to frequent called the Victory Hotel. It was located in Tanggu, Tianjin, on the way to Tuda. It was close to a market, so if you felt like making yourself something to eat instead of going to the cafeteria, then you could just take a stroll, buy what you want, and go back to your room and eat it. Each room at the hotel had a nice kitchen that contained a stove and other basic utilities needed for a homey kitchen. The hotel also had excellent swimming facilities. The swimming pool wasn't very large, but it was kept clean all year round and was heated to perfection in the winter. This was one of my favourite places in the entire hotel. The hotel also had a very good bowling alley. This was another of my favourite places to hang out. On one floor there was even a disco and a spa. This hotel had virtually everything, although I never got a very good look at the cafeteria. I was always told that it served good food, 
and that all of the waiters and waitresses were very kind and helpful. I personally liked this hotel and enjoyed staying there. All of the maids and cleaning staff were very cheerful, and the hotel carried an air of joy and happiness. I would recommend this hotel to everyone, even more than the Hilton or Holiday Inn. Describe a leisure center you often go to. You should say what it is and when you go there, what facilities it has, what you do there, and explain why you like this place. One leisure center that I really enjoyed going to was located in Tianjin. It was in Tuda, actually. It was in a hotel, and it was quite nice. One of the facilities that I enjoyed using was the swimming pool. It was indoors and heated and very relaxing. There was also a bowling alley, which, along with the bowling, had some nice shuffleboard tables that were clean and not too busy. The restaurant was quite nice with good food and wonderful service. I loved to go to the karaoke bar that they had there, and sing to my heart's content. I even practiced some English songs like "Sounds of Silence" and "My Heart Will Go On" from the movie Titanic. If I felt tired after studying or working all week, I would go to the massage center, and after just an hour there. I felt on top of the world. Then, of course, there was the jacuzzi and the sauna to just lay back and let the heat and the water take away the pressures and tension out of this world. Some nights at the restaurant, they would have floor shows with dancing and singing. If I wanted to go out and meet someone or just enjoy a drink, I would go to the disco that they had there and boogie to the wee hours of the morning. What are you doing? I'm reading. Are you reading a comedy? No, I'm not. Are you reading a romance? No, I'm not. Are you reading an adventure? No, I'm not. Are you reading a tragedy? No, I'm not. Are you reading a science fiction story? No, I'm not. What are you reading? I'm reading a cookbook. Past tense regular. I walked home. You cleaned the store. We played at the park. We talked at the coffee shop. They jumped into the river. She studied at school. He cooked at the restaurant. What did you do yesterday? I walked home. What did you do yesterday? I cleaned the store. What did he do yesterday? He cooked at the restaurant. What did she do yesterday? She studied at school. What did you do yesterday? We played at the park. What did you do yesterday? We talked at the coffee shop. What did they do yesterday? They jumped into the river. Did you walk to the store? No, I didn't. Did he cook at the restaurant? Yes, he did. Did she play at school? No, she didn't. Did you play at the park? Yes, we did. Did you walk to the coffee shop? No, we didn't. Did they jump into the river? Yes, they did. Did you lock the door? Yes, I did. When did he walk to school? He walked to school at eight o'clock. When did you cook dinner? I cooked dinner at six o'clock. When did you clean your room? I cleaned my room last week. When did he wash his car? He washed his car yesterday. When did she type the report? 
She typed it last night. Dialogue 2 What did you do last night? I played football with my friends. Was it fun? It was very funny. And what did you do? I cooked dinner for my family. What did you cook? I cooked pasta and soup. Past tense, irregular. I ran home. You swam at home. He slept at the hotel. She drank at the pub. We ate at the restaurant. You bought food at the store. They sang at the church. Did you swim at the park? No, I didn't. I swam at home. Did he sleep at the hotel? Yes, he did. Did she drink at the restaurant? No, she didn't. She drank at the pub. Did you eat at the restaurant? Yes, we did. Did you buy food at the mall? No, we didn't. We bought food at the store. Did they sing at the church? Yes, they did. Did he drive home? No, he didn't. He walked. Did you eat breakfast? Yes, I did. Where did you swim yesterday? I swam at the park. Where did he sleep? He slept at the hotel. Where did she drink? She drank at the pub. Where did you eat? We ate at the restaurant. Where did you buy food? We bought food at the store. Where did they sing? They sang at the church. Where did you go this morning? I went to the market. When did you buy a car? I bought a car yesterday. When did you sell your car? I sold my car last week. When did they come? They came last week. When did he eat? He ate at one o'clock. What did you buy at the market? I bought some chicken and vegetables. What did they do yesterday? They went to the beach. What did she study? She studied biology. What did he say? He said no. Dialogue 3 What did you do yesterday? I went to see a movie. What did you see? I saw Star Wars. Was it good? Yes, it was very exciting. What did you do? I went to eat with my family. Where did you go? We went to Sizzler's. Was the food good? Yes, it was good. Dialogue 4 What did you do today, John? I went to the library and I read some books. What did you read? I read about dinosaurs. Did you eat lunch? Yes, I did. What did you eat? I ate pizza. Was it good? Yes, it was. Future tense, going to. I am going to go home tomorrow. I am going home tomorrow. You are going to go to school next week. You are going to school next week. He is going to the store tonight. He is going to the store tonight. She is going to go to work tomorrow. She is going to work tomorrow. John is going to go to the park this afternoon. John is going to the park this afternoon. Mary is going to go to the mall this evening. Mary is going to the mall this evening. 
We are going to go to Paris next month. We are going to Paris next month. You are going to go to New York next Monday. You are going to New York next Monday. They are going to go to the restaurant on Saturday. They are going to the restaurant on Saturday. What are you going to do next week? I'm going to school. What are you going to do next month? We're going to Paris. What are you going to do next Monday? I'm going to New York. What are they going to do Saturday? They're going to the restaurant. What is he going to do tonight? He's going to the store. What is she going to do tomorrow? She's going to work. What is John going to do this evening? He's going to the park. What is Mary going to do this morning? She's going to the mall. When are you going to swim? I'm going to swim this afternoon. When are you going to go? We're going to go this evening. When are they going to work? They're going to work in Tuesday evening. When is he going to play tennis? He's going to play tennis tonight. When is she going to sing? She's going to sing on Saturday. When is John going home? John's going home next month. When is Mary going to come? Mary is going to come next year. Are you going to eat? Yes, I am. Is he going to swim? No, he isn't. Is she going to come? Yes, she is. Is John going to sing? No, he isn't. Is Mary going to play tennis? Yes, she is. Are you going to work? No, we aren't. Dialogue five. What are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to play volleyball at the beach. Who are you going with? I'm going to go with my friends from the university. What are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to stay home. Why are you going to stay home? Why don't you come with us? I'm going to do some work. Future tense. Will. I will go home. You will come to school. He will play tennis. She will swim. John will run. Mary will go to work. We will sing. They will run. When will you come to school? I'll come to school tomorrow. When will he play tennis? He'll play tennis tonight. When will she swim? She'll swim next week. When will John run? John will run this afternoon. When will Mary go to work? Mary will go to work next week. When will you sing? We will sing Tuesday evening. When will they run? They'll run tomorrow. Will you come to school? No, I will not. No, I won't. Will he play tennis? Yes, he will. Will she swim? No, she will not. No, she won't. Will John run? Yes, he will. Will Mary go to work? No, she will not. No, she won't. Will you sing? Yes, we will. Will they run? No, they will not. No, they won't. What will you do this morning? I'll go to school. What will he do tonight? He'll play tennis. What will she do next week? She'll swim. 
What will John do this afternoon? John will run. What will Mary do next month? Mary will go to work. What will you do Tuesday evening? We'll sing. What will they do tomorrow? They'll run. Like. I like mountains. You like the beach. He likes the forest. She likes flowers. They like rivers. Do you like mountains? Yes, I do. Do they like mountains? No, they don't. Does he like the beach? No, he doesn't. Does she like flowers? Yes, she does. What kind of movies do you like? I like action movies. What kind of movies does he like? He likes dramatic movies. What kind of movies does Jane like? Jane likes science fiction movies. What kind of food do you like? I like Italian food. What kind of food does she like? She likes spicy food. What kind of food does he like? He likes Chinese food. What kind of food does Tom like? He likes all kinds of food. What do you like to eat for breakfast? I like to eat bread and drink coffee. What do you like to do on the weekends? I like to play badminton and go swimming. How do you like your eggs? I like them boiled. How do they like to travel? They like to travel by train. Who does she like? She likes Brad Pitt. Who do they like? They like Madonna. Do you like Brad Pitt? No. Do you like Madonna? Of course. Do you like her? Yes, I do. Do you like them? Yes, I do. But I don't like their dog. Does she like you? Yes, she does. Does he like Susan? Yes, he does. Dialogue six. Do you like school? Yes, I do. What do you study? I study business. Do you like business? Yes, of course. What do you like about it? I like the money. And do you like homework? No. Live. Where do you live? I live in Los Angeles. Where do you live? We live on First Street. Where do they live? They live on Pine Avenue. Where does he live? He lives in Tokyo. Where does she live? She lives in England. Do you live in Los Angeles? Yes, I do. Do you live on Main Street? No, we don't. Do they live on Pine Avenue? Yes, they do. Does she live in Australia? No, she doesn't. Dialogue seven. Hello, where do you live? I live in London. Where do you live? I live in Birmingham. Do you like it? Yes, it's all right. Do you like London? Yes, but I don't like the weather. Where do your parents live? They live in Oxford. Oh, I used to live in Oxford. I liked it very much. Yes, I used to live there too. It's very beautiful. Where are you from? I'm from New York. You're from France. He's from Italy. She's from England. We're from India.
They're from Japan. Where are you from? I'm from New York. Where is he from? He's from Italy. Where are they from? They're from Japan. Where is Helen from? She's from England. Are you from England? No, I'm from Spain. Is she from America? Yes, she is. Are they from China? No, they're from Japan. Are you from India? Yes, we are. Dialogue eight. Hello, hello. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. And you? I'm very well. Where are you from? I'm from Portland. And you? I'm from Medford. Medford is very beautiful. Yes, it is. Can. I can cook Thai food. You can swim. He can play tennis. She can write very beautifully. We can play the guitar. They can speak Chinese. I can't jump high. You cannot cook Italian food. He cannot play snooker. She can't drive. We cannot sing. They can't speak Japanese. Can you swim? Yes, I can. Can they speak German? No, they can't. Can he play tennis? Yes, he can. Can she cook Italian food? No, she can't. Can John use a computer? Yes, he can. Can Susan drive? No, she can't. Dialogue nine. What sports can you play? I can play tennis, basketball, football, and volleyball. What about you? What sports can you play? I can play baseball, badminton, and football. Can you swim? Of course. Can you? No, but my brother can, and he will teach me. Possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns. It is my bag. It's my bag. It is your watch. It's your watch. It is his book. It's his book. It is her card. It's her car. It is our camera. It's our camera. It is their house. It's their house. It is John's handphone. It's John's handphone. It is Mary's hat. It's Mary's hat. Whose bag is this? It's mine. It's yours. It's his. It's hers. It's John's. It's Mary's. It's ours. It's yours. It's theirs. Is it your bag? Yes, it's mine. Is it his watch? No, it's yours. Is it John's handphone? Yes, it's his. Is it my hat? No, it's hers. Is it your camera? Yes, it's ours. Is it our book? No, it's his. Is it John and Mary's house? Yes, it's theirs. Whose? Whose bag is that? It's mine. Whose book is this? It's his. Whose car is that? 
It's hers. Whose hat is this? It's Mary's. Whose clothes are those? They're John's. Whose shoes are these? They're yours. Whose pens are these? They're ours. Dialogue 10 Whose bag is that? I don't know. It isn't yours? No, it's not mine. Is it hers? I don't think so. Maybe it's theirs. Yes, it's ours. Thank you. Used to I used to play basketball. You used to eat ice cream. He used to study English. She used to go to school. We used to work at the restaurant. They used to live in New York. Do you play basketball? I used to play basketball. Do you work at the restaurant? We used to work at the restaurant. Do they live in New York? They used to live in New York. Does he study English? He used to study English. Does she go to school? She used to go to school. Dialogue 11 Do you live in Los Angeles? No, I live in Chicago, but I used to live in Los Angeles. What did you do there? I used to be an actor. I used to be rich and famous. Weather How's the weather today? It's rainy. How was the weather yesterday? It was sunny. How will the weather be? It'll be hot. How's the weather going to be? It's going to be snowy. Is it cold today? Yes, it is. Was it warm yesterday? No, it wasn't. It was chilly. Will it be cloudy tomorrow? Yes, it will. Is it going to be windy tomorrow? No, it won't. Dialogue 12 How's the weather today? It's a little rainy. Is it cold? No, it's cool, but not cold. What was the weather like yesterday? It was sunny and pleasant. What will the weather be like tomorrow? It will be rainy. Want I want an apple. You want some medicine. They want some money. He wants a pencil. She wants some pencils. He wants a car. Do you want an apple? Yes, I do. Does she want some apples? No, she doesn't. Do you want a car? Yes, we do. Do they want some cars? No, they don't. I want to eat. You want to play. We want to study. They want to stay home. He wants to swim. She wants to run. Do you want to play? No, I don't. Do you want to study? Yes, we do. Do they want to go out? No, they don't. Does she want to sleep? No, she doesn't. Does he want to swim? Yes, he does. Dialogue 1 What are you doing? I'm reading. Are you reading a comedy? No, I'm not. Are you reading a romance? No, I'm not. Are you reading an adventure? No, I'm not. Are you reading a tragedy? No, I'm not.
Are you reading a science fiction story? No, I'm not. What are you reading? I'm reading a cookbook. Past tense regular. I walked home. You cleaned the store. We played at the park. We talked at the coffee shop. They jumped into the river. She studied at school. He cooked at the restaurant. What did you do yesterday? I walked home. What did you do yesterday? I cleaned the store. What did he do yesterday? He cooked at the restaurant. What did she do yesterday? She studied at school. What did you do yesterday? We played at the park. What did you do yesterday? We talked at the coffee shop. What did they do yesterday? They jumped into the river. Did you walk to the store? No, I didn't. Did he cook at the restaurant? Yes, he did. Did she play at school? No, she didn't. Did you play at the park? Yes, we did. Did you walk to the coffee shop? No, we didn't. Did they jump into the river? Yes, they did. Did you lock the door? Yes, I did. When did he walk to school? He walked to school at eight o'clock. When did you cook dinner? I cooked dinner at six o'clock. When did you clean your room? I cleaned my room last week. When did he wash his car? He washed his car yesterday. When did she type the report? She typed it last night. Dialogue two. What did you do last night? I played football with my friends. Was it fun? It was very funny. And what did you do? I cooked dinner for my family. What did you cook? I cooked pasta and soup. Past tense irregular. I ran home. You swam at home. He slept at the hotel. She drank at the pub. We ate at the restaurant. You bought food at the store. They sang at the church. Did you swim at the park? No, I didn't. I swam at home. Did he sleep at the hotel? Yes, he did. Did she drink at the restaurant? No, she didn't. She drank at the pub. Did you eat at the restaurant? Yes, we did. Did you buy food at the mall? No, we didn't. We bought food at the store. Did they sing at the church? Yes, they did. Did he drive home? No, he didn't. He walked. Did you eat breakfast? Yes, I did. Where did you swim yesterday? I swam at the park. Where did he sleep? He slept at the hotel. Where did she drink? She drank at the pub. Where did you eat? We ate at the restaurant. Where did you buy food? We bought food at the store. Where did they sing? They sang at the church. Where did you go this morning? I went to the market. When did you buy a car? I bought a car yesterday. When did you sell your car? I sold my car last week. When did they come? They came last week. 
When did he eat? He ate at one o'clock. What did you buy at the market? I bought some chicken and vegetables. What did they do yesterday? They went to the beach. What did she study? She studied biology. What did he say? He said no. Dialogue three. What did you do yesterday? I went to see a movie. What did you see? I saw Star Wars. Was it good? Yes, it was very exciting. What did you do? I went to eat with my family. Where did you go? We went to Sizzlers. Was the food good? Yes, it was good. Dialogue four. What did you do today, John? I went to the library, and I read some books. What did you read? I read about dinosaurs. Did you eat lunch? Yes, I did. What did you eat? I ate pizza. Was it good? Yes, it was. Future tense, going to. I am going to go home tomorrow. I am going home tomorrow. You are going to go to school next week. You are going to school next week. He is going to the store tonight. He is going to the store tonight. She is going to go to work tomorrow. She is going to work tomorrow. John is going to go to the park this afternoon. John is going to the park this afternoon. Mary is going to go to the mall this evening. Mary is going to the mall this evening. We are going to go to Paris next month. We are going to Paris next month. You are going to go to New York next Monday. You are going to New York next Monday. They are going to go to the restaurant on Saturday. They are going to the restaurant on Saturday. What are you going to do next week? I'm going to school. What are you going to do next month? We're going to Paris. What are you going to do next Monday? I'm going to New York. What are they going to do Saturday? They're going to the restaurant. What is he going to do tonight? He's going to the store. What is she going to do tomorrow? She's going to work. What is John going to do this evening? He's going to the park. What is Mary going to do this morning? She's going to the mall. When are you going to swim? I'm going to swim this afternoon. When are you going to go? We're going to go this evening. When are they going to work? They're going to work in Tuesday evening. When is he going to play tennis? He's going to play tennis tonight. When is she going to sing? She's going to sing on Saturday. When is John going home? John's going home next month. When is Mary going to come? Mary is going to come next year. Are you going to eat? Yes, I am. Is he going to swim? No, he isn't. Is she going to come? Yes, she is. Is John going to sing? No, he isn't. Is Mary going to play tennis? Yes, she is. Are you going to work? No, we aren't. Dialogue five. What are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to play volleyball at the beach. Who are you going with? I'm going to go with my friends from the university. What are you going to do tomorrow? 
I'm going to stay home. Why are you going to stay home? Why don't you come with us? I'm going to do some work. Future tense will. I will go home. You will come to school. He will play tennis. She will swim. John will run. Mary will go to work. We will sing. They will run. When will you come to school? I'll come to school tomorrow. When will he play tennis? He'll play tennis tonight. When will she swim? She'll swim next week. When will John run? John will run this afternoon. When will Mary go to work? Mary will go to work next week. When will you sing? We will sing Tuesday evening. When will they run? They'll run tomorrow. Will you come to school? No, I will not. No, I won't. Will he play tennis? Yes, he will. Will she swim? No, she will not. No, she won't. Will John run? Yes, he will. Will Mary go to work? No, she will not. No, she won't. Will you sing? Yes, we will. Will they run? No, they will not. No, they won't. What will you do this morning? I'll go to school. What will he do tonight? He'll play tennis. What will she do next week? She'll swim. What will John do this afternoon? John will run. What will Mary do next month? Mary will go to work. What will you do Tuesday evening? We'll sing. What will they do tomorrow? They'll run. Like. I like mountains. You like the beach. He likes the forest. She likes flowers. They like rivers. Do you like mountains? Yes, I do. Do they like mountains? No, they don't. Does he like the beach? No, he doesn't. Does she like flowers? Yes, she does. What kind of movies do you like? I like action movies. What kind of movies does he like? He likes dramatic movies. What kind of movies does Jane like? Jane likes science fiction movies. What kind of food do you like? I like Italian food. What kind of food does she like? She likes spicy food. What kind of food does he like? He likes Chinese food. What kind of food does Tom like? He likes all kinds of food. What do you like to eat for breakfast? I like to eat bread and drink coffee. What do you like to do on the weekends? I like to play badminton and go swimming. How do you like your eggs? I like them boiled. How do they like to travel? They like to travel by train. Who does she like? She likes Brad Pitt. Who do they like? They like Madonna. Do you like Brad Pitt? No. Do you like Madonna? Of course. Do you like her? Yes, I do. Do you like them? Yes, I do. But I don't like their dog. Does she like you? 
Yes, she does. Does he like Susan? Yes, he does. Dialogue six. Do you like school? Yes, I do. What do you study? I study business. Do you like business? Yes, of course. What do you like about it? I like the money. And do you like homework? No. Live. Where do you live? I live in Los Angeles. Where do you live? We live on First Street. Where do they live? They live on Pine Avenue. Where does he live? He lives in Tokyo. Where does she live? She lives in England. Do you live in Los Angeles? Yes, I do. Do you live on Main Street? No, we don't. Do they live on Pine Avenue? Yes, they do. Does she live in Australia? No, she doesn't. Dialogue seven. Hello, where do you live? I live in London. Where do you live? I live in Birmingham. Do you like it? Yes, it's all right. Do you like London? Yes, but I don't like the weather. Where do your parents live? They live in Oxford. Oh, I used to live in Oxford. I liked it very much. Yes, I used to live there too. It's very beautiful. Where are you from? I'm from New York. You're from France. He's from Italy. She's from England. We're from India. They're from Japan. Where are you from? I'm from New York. Where is he from? He's from Italy. Where are they from? They're from Japan. Where is Helen from? She's from England. Are you from England? No, I'm from Spain. Is she from America? Yes, she is. Are they from China? No, they're from Japan. Are you from India? Yes, we are. Dialogue eight. Hello, hello. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. And you? I'm very well. Where are you from? I'm from Portland. And you? I'm from Medford. Medford is very beautiful. Yes, it is. Can. I can cook Thai food. You can swim. He can play tennis. She can write very beautifully. We can play the guitar. They can speak Chinese. I can't jump high. You cannot cook Italian food. He cannot play snooker. She can't drive. We cannot sing. They can't speak Japanese. Can you swim? Yes, I can. Can they speak German? No, they can't. Can he play tennis? Yes, he can. Can she cook Italian food? No, she can't. Can John use a computer? Yes, he can. Can Susan drive? No, she can't. Dialogue nine. What sports can you play? I can play tennis, basketball, football, and volleyball. What about you? What sports can you play?
I can play baseball, badminton, and football. Can you swim? Of course. Can you? No, but my brother can, and he will teach me. Possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns. It is my bag. It's my bag. It is your watch. It's your watch. It is his book. It's his book. It is her card. It's her car. It is our camera. It's our camera. It is their house. It's their house. It is John's handphone. It's John's handphone. It is Mary's hat. It's Mary's hat. Whose bag is this? It's mine. It's yours. It's his. It's hers. It's John's. It's Mary's. It's ours. It's yours. It's theirs. Is it your bag? Yes, it's mine. Is it his watch? No, it's yours. Is it John's handphone? Yes, it's his. Is it my hat? No, it's hers. Is it your camera? Yes, it's ours. Is it our book? No, it's his. Is it John and Mary's house? Yes, it's theirs. Whose? Whose bag is that? It's mine. Whose book is this? It's his. Whose car is that? It's hers. Whose hat is this? It's Mary's. Whose clothes are those? They're John's. Whose shoes are these? They're yours. Whose pens are these? They're ours. Dialogue ten. Whose bag is that? I don't know. It isn't yours. No, it's not mine. Is it hers? I don't think so. Maybe it's theirs. Yes, it's ours. Thank you. Used to. I used to play basketball. You used to eat ice cream. He used to study English. She used to go to school. We used to work at the restaurant. They used to live in New York. Do you play basketball? I used to play basketball. Do you work at the restaurant? We used to work at the restaurant. Do they live in New York? They used to live in New York. Does he study English? He used to study English. Does she go to school? She used to go to school. Dialogue eleven. Do you live in Los Angeles? No, I live in Chicago, but I used to live in Los Angeles. What did you do there? I used to be an actor. I used to be rich and famous. Weather. How's the weather today? It's rainy. How was the weather yesterday? It was sunny. How will the weather be? It'll be hot. How's the weather going to be? It's going to be snowy. Is it cold today? Yes, it is. Was it warm yesterday? No, it wasn't. It was chilly. Will it be cloudy tomorrow? Yes, it will. Is it going to be windy tomorrow? No, it won't. Dialogue twelve. How's the weather today? 
It's a little rainy. Is it cold? No, it's cool, but not cold. What was the weather like yesterday? It was sunny and pleasant. What will the weather be like tomorrow? It will be rainy. Want. I want an apple. You want some medicine. They want some money. He wants a pencil. She wants some pencils. He wants a car. Do you want an apple? Yes, I do. Does she want some apples? No, she doesn't. Do you want a car? Yes, we do. Do they want some cars? No, they don't. I want to eat. You want to play. We want to study. They want to stay home. He wants to swim. She wants to run. Do you want to play? No, I don't. Do you want to study? Yes, we do. Do they want to go out? No, they don't. Does she want to sleep? No, she doesn't. Does he want to swim? Yes, he does.